So hello, everybody. My name is Dave Foley. I'm from Hasmark Publishing International. I'm joined today by Judy O'Byrne from Hasmark Publishing. And also our very special guest today is Tom Herstad. Uh, and he wrote a beautiful book called Second Line West. Second Line West is um, his first book. And it is a, an amazing creation. Tom, can you tell us uh, the significance of the title and, and really who, who is the book for? Sure, Dave. And hello, Judy. Second Line West is, uh, is a road that we lived on back in the 70s, 80s. Our mother was a widow at 38 with four children. Wow. Uh, wow. Our home on Second Line West was a place that she brought people into. Our spare bedroom was very rarely empty. You know, she brought people in to the spare bedroom, and it's like Second Line West was a place for people to have a second chance. Oh, Ooh, how significant the, the, yeah, yeah. The, the, there's no such thing as a coincidence. That's right. Yeah. And oh, here it is. That's it main street. It. It's, uh, it's the result of uh, my mother's memorial service. My mother passed at 73. At her memorial service, I was approached by three people. And they said, do you remember me? I stayed with you back in the 70s. And the other, one, the other two were in the 80s. Uh, they said that time in your home was so significant to my life. I, uh, I needed a place to regroup. And your mother opened your home and uh, her heart to me. And as a result, I found my way. And uh, I owe a lot to your mother. And uh, it, was, it was really interesting because uh, after the memorial service, we decided that we were going to go and find additional people that did stay at our home. And speaking of your mom, Tom, you there is a, a she has a favorite life motto, which I understand is to love another is a gift we give to ourselves. Yes, that was her life motto. And I really became present with that as a statement and, and, and a motto when I was writing the book. And uh, after the interviews were completed, I, uh, I did a lot of the writing at night to uh, but I, I would wake up at three in the morning and, and I would have to purge a story. But this one particular night, I was up in the loft and, and that motto that, that, that she lived by, to love another is a gift that we give ourselves. I, I was contemplating that and I looked at the walls. I thought to myself, why did, why did my mother bring these people into our home? These people that needed a place to stay, that needed a helping hand. And then it occurred to me, I think we're born with an inherent desire, want and actual need to connect and help one another. And it's through that experience that we ourselves experience joy and fulfillment. That is, that is so awesome. I, I just think yeah. that's so beautiful, right? So I appreciate that. And, and that's a great motto to live by as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, your, your mother helped an awful lot of people. The people that she helped needed the help the most. Right when they needed it, she was there for them. Is there yeah. any, any of these people that stayed with you? that you remember the most or that are the most memorable or maybe your favorites? Yeah, there's a couple. Barbie. I went to school in Rochester, New York. I've been away for nine months. When I came home after that year, there was ladies clothing all over my bedroom. <laughs> my mother was coming out of the dining room and she was like, Shh, sh come here. I need to talk to you. I said, what's going on in there? And I pointed into my room and she said, her name is Barbie. She needs that room more than you do right now, and I'm not moving her around. You got your first year under your belt. Your grades are up. You're on your way. This girl is not on her way, and you and I have an opportunity to do something about that for her. Know that I love you. You're my guy, but you need to make a decision right now. Do you want the spare bedroom or the couch? I took the spare bedroom. She was, she was in and out of our house for about a year, year and a half. She went into theater and became a prop specialist. Are we still in touch with her? Yes, we are. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. yeah. See, there's so many heartwarming stories like that. Yeah. I love that. Let me share another one with you. Sure. Um, 1985, my mother's in Toronto. She locks eyes with a homeless lady. She walks over to this lady and she says, excuse me, dear, what is your name? The lady says, my name is Rosie. My mother said, Rosie, you're coming home with me. She spent three and a half months in our house. She was on the streets for over 20 years. My mother bought her a full set of teeth for Christmas that year. Wow. Before she left, she sat us all down at the kitchen table and she said, your mother's given me two gifts far more important than these teeth. Wow. The first gift is 
She's allowed me to witness your relationships and feel a part of a family. I've never seen this before. And the second thing your mother has done is she's allowed me to understand how I can love myself exactly the way I am. And with that, she left. <laughs> and we heard that she connected with her brother and went back oh, to Northern wow. Quebec. Wow. Yeah. What an extraordinary thing to do. I mean, fast forward to today. Can you imagine? It just wouldn't happen yeah. between all the horror stories you hear. And, <clears throat> but your mom to have such an open heart. Like she didn't give con thought to consequence other than unselfishly to them. It's, I asked my mother's best friend, we were having a conversation about how my, my, our mother was able to love the way she did. And this lady said, your mother saw the soul. And uh, as a result of being able to see the soul, she was able to know trust and, and I guess read, read that decision. To open your home is a big deal. It is a big deal. That's your sanctuary. That's where everybody feels safe. And, and you're right. She has to have seen the depth of a soul to have trusted that soul to bring it into her sanctuary and to share it. And not only just share it just herself, but now she's sharing it with four kids, which is yeah. pretty incredible. Wow. Yeah, we used to say... <laughs> Every once in a while, I was a man of the family, so it was my job to ask every once in a while, you know, are you sure? You know, as a protector. And it was always <laughs> the same reply. Tom, we'll figure this out. Wow. Uh, um, you, that reminds me of one of, your, one of your stories was about the, I, I don't, you didn't use the word biker, but he seemed like a pretty rough guy. And uh, your mother had him crying in the kitchen. Yes. Um, we refer to him as Mr. L. He uh, was a biker, a drug dealer, spent some time at our home. My mother was helping him learn how to find himself this particular morning you're referring to. And he's sitting in the kitchen with my mother at the kitchen table and he's crying and he's asking her why he's crying. <laughs> and she said, you're starting to feel this is a good thing. You're safe with me. Yeah. And it changed his life. That's fantastic. The I highest get frequency, eh? Love. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And how simple it is. All she did was see these souls. Mm -hmm. That simply. You don't have to take it and make it be anything other than that. Just, just quite simply. And, and it leads the question, do you or your sisters, did any of you think that her gift rubbed off on you? I kind of already yeah. know the answer, but... Yeah, it, it has. As, uh, natural caregivers will, will pay attention to people in our life. Actually, there's an example of that in my house right now. A good friend of mine who's in the book, he's living with us, uh, regrouping, finding himself. Yeah. Oh. So it's nice I, to be able to pay it forward too, though, like that. It yeah. Actually, yeah, I love that um, expression, pay it forward. Yes. I, that's why I figured the, I knew the answer. I already knew it. I didn't know you had a living example of it right now, yeah. but I'm not the least bit surprised knowing no, you exactly. that you're paying it forward. And I, I know that you, uh, your mother saw the souls of, of, it was more than just people, I guess in the real world, people are what need the help, but, but I love the hen story. Oh, <laughs> I and love yeah. that hen Sorry, that, My, that was... Yeah. So we had moved from second line West and a hen comes walking up the driveway one morning and um, looks out and sees this hen walking up the driveway. <laughs> it builds a nest at the back of the pool. Mom said, that's her spot. Leave her be. Mom named her Henrietta. And one morning we had to coax Henrietta out of the nest because she had laid these eggs and they were rotting and we had to dispose of them. And a couple weeks later, Henrietta is sitting on more eggs and we have to dispose of them. And then my mother says to me, looking out at Henrietta, she said, you know, you got to take me over to local farm. She went into this local farm and came out with fertilized eggs. <laughs> we come back to the house. We coax Henrietta out with the bread and we put these fertilized eggs in there. And I don't know, I guess it was a week or two later, eggs were hatching and she was a mother. Uh, just a little thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, that meant so much to this animal. I asked my mother years later, what about that uh, at Henrietta? And she said that 
that was a, a hen that she had when she was three or four down on the East Coast. The soul of that hen that had come back to revisit, say hello. Oh, cool. <laughs> because Very good. One morning we woke up and the, and the hen was gone with the, the four chicks. Yeah, yeah um, she served her purpose. But it was it was gone. Mother's insight to know exactly what she needed. Yeah, she paid attention, right? Yeah. She paid attention. There it is. This is a big message, you know, oh. in the book, you know, either consciously or subconsciously. I think the reader will experience the fact that my mother paid attention. Wow. Again, yeah. it's the simple things in life that, mm -hmm. that every single one of us can, can learn from. Her, her legacy of, of teaching us things like that is phenomenal. I think that's yeah. fantastic. But if you had to pick just one takeaway or lesson where what would you want the reader to get from from your book it goes back to that we are born with an inherent desire want and actual need to connect and help one another and it's through that experience that we experience joy and fulfillment joy fulfillment and happiness it's something we can experience and i think that the world has got it upside down you know we're born that way. If you look at uh, young children playing in a playground, if one of them falls down, another one helps them up. Yep. We're born with that. Joy, fulfillment, and happiness are truly experienced through the engaging with other people and helping others. That's the message. Yeah, that's a great message. <laughs> that's a great message. Second line, West. Where can people learn about you and your book? Well, uh, website is TomHerstadOfficial.com. This will be one book of, uh, I think I've got two or three more. So that's, and, and, and we, we didn't touch on this before, but the, but the, the book is going to be a movie. Uh, movie deal oh, yes. was, uh, was confirmed as oh, a result good. of a, um, a movie producer his wife reading the book and saying, this is a message that needs to be shared with the world. Get a hold of this guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, I went, I sat with him and he said, it's a female lead. It's bright, beautiful stories in these challenging times. These are stories that need to be told. Your mother had the courage and the bravery to love and the world needs to know this. And yeah. as a result of one of my customers, I'm a lighting designer, uh, taking the book away on vacation they uh, financed the screenplay. And what they said to me after they read the book, and it was, it's a husband-wife team, uh, they said, this is a message that the world needs to hear. So they said the same thing to me that the producer yeah, said. I absolutely agree. Well, thank you. Yeah. It's, uh, thank you for writing. it's a labor of love. <laughs> thank, yeah. thank you and your sisters for having the courage to write it as well. Because you're yes, putting yourselves out there, and it's great. My sister was a big part of this. She helped the interviews. She transcribed the interviews to print. Uh, it's, a, it's a family project. She, she actually wrote the original screenplay for the film. They brought the daughter's energy into this project, into Second Line West, the movie, by allowing her to write the screenplay, being coached by Tom Schlesinger. Mm. 30 years experience in screenplay writing. It's, it's a family story. It absolutely makes sense. Wow. So, yeah. Yep. All right. Well, thank you very, very, very much for talking with us today. It's been thank such a pleasure much. to sort of get the inside insights to the book and, and, and talk about it. And um, Looking forward to getting it in our hands. Yeah. When, when is yes. it publishing? It is going May to be May 14th available. is my mother's birthday. May 14th. Excellent. So that's that's I'll remember the day. that date. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Well, congratulations and thank you. We look well, forward thank you. To I it. couldn't do this without you. Anytime. It's our honor, truly. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Okay.